Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about embracing growth. Are you always excited and willing to learn and change? Or do you find yourself comfortable with the status quo? When life doesn't exactly work out as you hoped, are you able to embrace a new dream? Do you find yourself embarrassed or perhaps frustrated at past choices? Are you okay with all of your life choices? Learn how to keep from staying stagnant as we begin our month focusing on growing into who you're meant to be. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? Unclear your clutter inside and out. We'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Hey everyone, it's the beginning of spring, especially if you're in the south. Other areas starting to get that hope. Daylight savings time's coming up. And I've been thinking a lot about growth. First, an update, the two or three episodes a month continues to feel really right instead of the two six-week breaks in a way to reduce my load. And this month really hammered it home for me because I want us growing, changing, and learning. And if you've left episodes, that means you have more time to contemplate and work on things. Wish me good luck because the crazy period has will have begun. I'm recording this early. I My hope is to get probably through May, possibly June, I'm not that far out yet, a regular schedule and then do the two to three episodes a month. So because we're moving and getting ready, I am recording this first episode the day after everything that went down in DC. And if even if you're not in America, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm still kind of processing all of that. I'm have a range of emotions. But that just hit home for me how really important it is that we continue to grow and continue to learn and that we question things. One of the things I really appreciated about my former teacher, Judy, and I've done a couple interviews with her, and I really encourage you to listen to those, is that Judy when she was my teacher, she said, here are just some tools. Here are some tools for your tool case. And I don't expect you to do everything as I say, go out, explore, learn on your own. And that's my hope that I'm doing that here at the podcast. And just seeing everything go down just reminded me how becoming aware and having personal growth is super important. This month was also inspired, and today was inspired by the ClearSight program that I did. We were once, I was with Judy, and we had a really small class. I think at this point, I don't know if they're, I think we graduated with six, and maybe at this point they're eight or nine. And I just remember crying and saying, because I should first say, we had a thing at ClearSight about a growth period, and growth periods were hard. Growth periods were hard because we were wading through the molasses. We were digging with layers of stuff and it wasn't easy and i had a friend that did a similar program they called it another (laughs) growth period and it just reminded me that what was really hard clear sight had such a huge impact on my life and really began my work of going deeper i was working with a client recently and she had discovered that she had not healed some trauma. And it was a very impactful moment. Another thing that inspired today was I got a podcast review and I didn't see it until I told you, I only check those out when I'm told go look and it's inspired a couple episodes this month. So I'm grateful. Anyway, they were angry at me basically told me to stay in my lane and they said they were angry one that the podcast has changed. If I'm not growing and learning and doing more, because I'm pushing you a little more, 
And especially this month, I'm saying, okay, let's take it a level deeper. I hope I'm always growing, learning, and becoming. And I hope the same for all of you listening and watching. So she was angry, just go back to what you know. And she was upset that I had the audacity. She's like, you don't have training in this. And, you know, I work with people and you coach and you clear your clutter and you get layers. You can get into some pretty profound, very challenging and big stuff. And she was angry that I had was talking about negative relationships and how that could be abusive because she said, you're making a big leap there. Not all negative relationships and not all toxic was the word. Not all toxic relationships are abusive, but they definitely can be. And if you're in a toxic relationship, it can be abusive. I'm not saying that it is, but that had really upset her. And I've done enough work to know that it's always interesting to me when people get so upset and I hit a nerve, like someone was so angry at me, they couldn't figure out how to post on the podcast. And so they had to come over to YouTube. And then with this, I'm going to assume it was a woman because that just to me means you need healing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no judgment. And what kind of was heartbreaking for me is I am believe that this woman probably has challenges in her relationship because I hit a nerve. Remember what others do is about them and how you respond is about you. So what about that episode triggered something in her? Sometimes we just can't face stuff. I was working with a client and I said, you know, this relative is probably not going to be able to face some things in this lifetime. And that's okay. That's what they're doing. And there's no judgment in that. But you have to prepare yourself for that. Not anyone wants to, not everyone wants to learn and grow. My hope is for you listening and watching that you're here because that's what you want. I always say, I, this is how I feel now. It might change because I want to grow. I want to go deeper. I don't want you just at the surface. And if you're just beginning to look at the podcast and listen, check out earlier episodes if that might be a starting point for you. Our wounds must be dealt with in order to move forward. With people who struggle with trauma, addiction, anger, depression, or anxiety, they have to, they rub against those fears and insecurities. And that's going to happen when you start growing and learning and becoming the person that you're meant to be. There's nothing wrong with it. And it's a process. It's like a layer of an onion. One of the reasons I mentioned in January, I still have some healing to do around some things. And that's what I want to write my book and process that and serve as an example for other. If we're not moving forward and growing and learning and becoming, we die a little bit. We really do. We stay stagnant. We're not in the joy of life. I've been thinking about these board members who I thought, how would my life be if I had to look out and peek out the window every day? And I thought, you know what? They've probably never had extreme joy in their life. They're, you can just tell they're like a concrete block. And it, it makes me sad. It's like, you, you know, to not embrace that joy of life. And so when you rub up against all those emotions, it's okay. Honor them, release them, and move forward. As I was writing the introduction to this, I had reminded and remembered my dream when I was living in Los Angeles was to be a screenwriter. And some people that thought I had some talent, my family was really supportive, didn't happen. That's not the world for me. I'm doing my writing now. Am I Shakespeare? No. Am I a New York Times bestseller? No, but it brings me a lot of joy and I'm supporting people. I hear from people all the time how the books help them. I'm just really excited. As you know, I'm going to be finishing up the plant medicine class at the end of this month, early April. Hopefully get that done before we move. And I found something else that's going to complement that. I'm super excited and I can't wait. I have a target date. Maybe I want to get another certification of 2022, 2023, and we'll keep you posted, but it's supporting and clearing clutter, and I'm very excited. So on with today's episode. Staying stagnant causes clutter. If you're not growing or changing, it can affect your relationship. You know, I remember one time I was working, I had this 
last job I had in LA before moving out to North Carolina. And the boss, the one boss I had was awful. He's one of the worst bosses I ever had. And so I was at, in clear sight at the time. So I'm like, okay, keep working on yourself. Keep working on yourself. And as Judy said, you know, when you change your energy or vibration and you raise that, either people will join you or they'll go away. And I found that to be really true throughout life. And I thought, just work on yourself, just work on yourself. And lo and behold, he announced he was leaving. And as someone said, I had a permagrin on my face that day. And after he left, I ended up getting one of the best bosses I've ever had in my life. So if you are staying stagnant, that can create clutter. You can't grow yourself. You can't grow as a couple and have a deeper, more enriching relationship. You create physical clutter if you're not realizing you can let stuff go, right? You always say, oh, I can't let that go. What if I need it someday? But it's stifling your growth. When you don't learn more about your challenges, you create spiritual clutter. When there's no growth, there's no movement. And stunted growth can create emotional clutter. If you're angry or jealous or fear or frustrated, I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, when you get those feelings or in that growth period and rubbing up against learning more about yourself and overcoming your challenges. And you can create mental clutter because you might be focused on the same problem or stuck in anxiety or stress. And it can create health clutter if you can't acknowledge a problem like weight loss and better nutrition. Mini update on Noom, doing fairly well, drinking my water. I got a health watch, which has been amazing, by the way. It has been helped me because I need discipline in this area. I invite you to ask yourself, where are you stagnant in life? Now, here are some signs you're growing. You question your belief systems. Now, you can have beliefs and they're not always going to make you happy. They will probably let you down. I know some of mine have in life and that's okay. But you question and you learn and you grow. Not seeing yourself as a victim. This is huge. When you feel like a victim, Consider that it's self-imposed limitations and limiting your perception in general. One of the things I've always tried to do is expand my perception. What is the bigger picture? How can I get out of my little box and see what a bigger picture might be? Now, I, I want to be clear. I'm not, and I need to do another episode on this. I'm not saying that, for instance, if you're a victim of a crime, that you're not a victim. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I am hoping to explain is it's about not owning your life and always blaming someone else. It's always someone else's fault and you played no role. And it's just fascinating to me when I watch people my age and I'm like, what? It's someone else's fault. You can't hold a steady job. Wow. Since you've left high school over 30 years, that's phenomenal that multiple people have had it in for you. I'm just hoping that you understand how I'm making this distinction. I know I've shared this story before out living in Los Angeles and my younger brother, he had this valuable insight and said, you see yourself as a victim. And in that moment I could hear it. And that was incredibly beneficial for me because I was like, wow, he's right. But what does that mean? How does it affect my life? And when you get out of that victim mentality and do I still have it? Absolutely. But boy, does it make a difference. Another sign is you resolve your hurt and pain. You dig deep. You get to the root. What part did I play in this? Again, taking responsibility and owning your life. You say, okay, this was painful, but how can I learn from this? How can I heal this? How can I move forward? had a friend that got divorced and for years, and I think I'm hoping she's finally moved forward. She just wanted to wallow in her pain. And she was surrounded by people who did that. And anytime someone like I made a suggestion and I backed off after that, I was like, okay, that's where she is. It is what it is, but I'm not going to say anything anymore. But then that just kept her. She didn't grow in any way, shape or form when she did that. 
you become more present because that's your point of power to change. Instead of fear or anxiety into the future or focusing on regrets from your past, you're being present and know that right now is all I have. Right now is my ability to make a different choice. You feel the fear and do it anyway. You might have some concerns, but you know what? You're going to do it. You used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. That's changed. It's a big deal to stand up in court. You know, that brought up on my, oh, no, no, everyone will like me. Ooh. You know what? Even though we lost, it was great. And I believe it was just another straw on the camel's back. And eventually, I have to believe that truth will prevail. And you just, whatever you put out in life, and again, I go back, if you are like a sad concrete block, I would not trade places with you in the world. You might've won in quotation marks, but did you really win? It wouldn't change my life for yours in a heartbeat. Feel stuck, but have no clue what you need to do to move forward? Would you like to feel energized and excited every day? Are you ready to create the life you desire? Julie's Caraccio supports you in finding the answers within and then taking action to make changes happen. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie can support you with life coaching. When you let go of not so good relationships, the drama trauma, save the drama for your mama. When I was at, when I lived in LA for a while, I was surrounded by crazy drama. And looking back, it was amazing to me the time and energy I spent doing that. When you let go of all that stuff, not only the time that you free up, but the energy, you were like, wow, I didn't realize how m- much of my thoughts this was taking up. I didn't realize how it was making me tired. So when you let go of all that, it makes a huge difference. I am, I'm only going to talk about this once. We are on season eight of Married at First Sight, and I'm dying to see how it, how it plays out. So far, we have 24 couples, and I think four are still together. But this one guy, and Tony would, will point out, wow, he's making a jab at her. And I'm really curious. This just one man is awful and said something to her, like, Kissing you made me feel dead inside. And Pastor Cal, who Reverend Cal, I I really like, was said that's the worst thing I've ever heard since counseling on the show. And he was great because he caught him. He's like, "Get up on out here!" And I was like, "Could have sworn then, Pastor Cal, would have been okay. Get the heck on up here if you're not the man that I need you to be. Like divorce her now." And so I'm hopeful when I read the where are they now that they did not get married and that she has found someone, but, but his, this man, I was like, wow, you need an awareness check. And I'm hopeful that when they saw this on TV and the woman, I thought, oh, and her friends, wow, what great friends. And this would be another thing you're growing. You have friends that are truthful to you and tell it like it is. They said, you're, you've become a different person. You're unhappy around him. We don't think he treats you well. And they did it in a kind, compassionate way. And it was really wonderful to see. And as I mentioned, I think last month, probably more than one episode, because we were on a kick. It was phenomenal to see how people had changed and grown. And when people who lack self-awareness, it's just phenomenal to me. So when you let all of that stuff go, when you're really to examine yourself, when you let go of the drama trauma, it means you're growing and changing. You can hang with comfort right we're taught danger will rogers danger i was doing a little 90 minute program last night with my friends barrett and beth if you i'm going to have them on the podcast again if you haven't listened to the interview on animal communication check it out but at the end we were silent and it was great because no one had to speak and they said you know it's okay to hang with the silence it's okay to feel a little bit of discomfort with that when you are getting outside of your comfort zone when you are moving forward, it can be uncomfortable. 
And that's a good thing. When you take action and embrace change, when you just sit around and you don't take action, that can increase depression, self-pity, feeling like a victim, right? Because you're just like, hmm, woe is me. When you take action, you become empowered, and that can help increase your self-esteem. It takes courage to step into the great unknown, to experience life, and to learn and grow. And that allows you to share your gifts with the world. Most of the neighborhood was really surprised and admired the suit. A handful or maybe more than a handful. Let's go with one third. We're like, I can't believe you did this. You're crazy and think I'm in the wrong for standing up. But, you know, I have no doubt that that will have a ripple effect and allow someone else to have the courage to do the same thing. So when you take action, when you embrace change, when you share that, you give the gift of someone else saying, hey, I can do it too. Wow, if they did it, I can do it. Getting support. You're doing that right now because you're listening to the podcast or watching this on YouTube. It puts you on track to move forward, to reach your goals, and grow into the person that you're meant to be. You're like, I don't have all the answers. What support can I get? So that's a sign that you're moving forward. And then finally, aware you'll die someday. I have a finite amount of time here on the physical plane of Earth. What do I want to do? How do I want to make the most of it? And when you're aware of that and have accepted it, that can give you a little shove to grow and change. Now, how do you move towards being who you're meant to be? I'd encourage you to think about all the signs. Hmm, how am I already growing? Accept your work in progress. Like a researcher, if the facts don't work, then you need to change it. How do you need to make this move? How do you make need to take action to be the person that you want to be? I thought for a while when I was younger, oh, there's this end destination. I'm going to be all enlightened, hopefully by 50. Has not happened. And what I've realized is I'm never going to be enlightened. I am going to, in this lifetime, Maybe I'll luck out and, you know, about 100 million more lifetimes it'll happen. I know I'm always a work in progress and I'm okay with that. It doesn't bother me anymore. It doesn't bother me anymore that I have dents and dings and challenges. Adjust your habits. Getting healthy is my big focus this year. Last year with everything that went on, you know, we've been going to the gym regularly, but that got out of whack. My diet, horrible. So I joined Noon, and I got a planner, which I really like. I'm going to hold this up for you watching on YouTube, and this is a beautiful color. I love this turquoise. And I got the health watch. I had to change and adjust my habit to move forward and believe I'm meant to be healthy, and that's what I really desire. So I had to adjust my habits around that instead of just mindlessly eating on the couch saying, okay, what did I eat today? And the thing I push about noon, am I stressed out? Am I mindlessly eating? You know, with everything that went down in D.C., I didn't grab comfort food to eat. I stayed on track. That's huge for me. That is huge. If I adjust my habits, I can change. I can grow. You actively work on your issues. You set realistic goals and you work towards them daily. You don't say, I'm not going to be jealous anymore. You have to be aware of it, and then you have to take action. It's not just it's if I'm just like, oh, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to lose weight, which I did a lot. Then I'm actually doing it because I'm like, okay, weigh yourself this morning. And I have a little noon tracker to help with all that. You have to actively work on it. It's not going to magically change. It stinks, but yeah, you got to do the work. Play, have fun. That allows you to connect and open up, to be engaged, which allows you to be more creative, and it invites in opportunities. The plant class is a good example. That's something I would have never thought of. Never had. I love nature. I love to hug trees, but plants couldn't have told you much. And because I knew someone 
and they was like, oh, check this out. Or I, they, they followed someone on Facebook, then I followed her. And I was like, huh, medicinal plant sounds pretty interesting, but that's allowed me to learn more. And one of the things, because you have to do tea meditations and a bunch of other things, it's allowed for healing, which I would have never expected. And it's allowed me to grow because I'm clearing more of that inner clutter out. Doing self-examination. Dig deep. Always look within. Take the time for reflection. That's awareness plus action equals change. When I took the break from Facebook, I had posted... And this guy, I've known him since I was a kid, and his wife unfriended me, which I'm like grateful. Just the more I read when you comment on other posts, I don't even want to be around the energy. But I had posted, I'm taking a break from social media because when I can muster no compassion for someone who just comes on my page all angry, they haven't said anything to me in years, I said, who obviously is in so much pain and I can't have compassion for that, I need to take a break, right? I'm like, I'm not going to worry about him and his drama. You know, good luck with that. How is it affecting me? What in me, in me, inside do I need to examine? Keeping it real. I'd kind of touched on this earlier. Who do you surround yourself with? You need people who are going to tell you the truth. What I love about Cotty, Cotty always will tell me the truth. She doesn't say, hey, you're an idiot. She says, hmm, let's talk about this. Or you might want to consider, how are you feeling and probing and asking questions? It's like the Kate woman from Married at First Sight. Her friends loved her enough to say, you know what? I don't think this guy's good for you. To so be really aware. Are you around people who tell you the truth or tell you what you want to hear? Do you hang out with people who view everything the exact same way? Or do you have people that have different viewpoints and thoughts and going to challenge you. Because if you just are hanging out with people that think the same as you, one, boring, but two, you're never going to grow because you just feed off of each other. You have no desire to learn another opinion or what people are thinking. I've, I've changed views on things for sure once I was educated. Be curious. Be more engaged in your surroundings. And if you do that, you're naturally going to grow. You're learning, you're figuring things out. When I find people that aren't curious, I have no desire to be like that. And I'm grateful for that because that reminds me, no, that's not how you want to be. I was curious with plants. I like to ask people, why do you think that way? What brought you to this point? I might, doesn't mean I'm going to change my views or that I have to agree or that I have to condone anything that I'm not okay condoning. But I'm making an effort to learn because when I've done that, I've learned, I've changed views, I've grown. I don't want to stop doing that. Solitude and rest. It's really important. There's a time for everything and how you need to focus your energy. Throughout this couple months, you know, this is a crazy year until the end of June. So do, do, do. But make sure if I need a nap, I take it. I don't overschedule myself. I know that to hear my inner voice, I need to reflect. I need to be quiet. I need to be calm. If you are constantly busy or distracted, that doesn't give you the time to go within, to dig deeper. So make sure that you are finding time throughout your day to do that and be comfortable with the silence. Finding your passion. I want to be clear here. Having a passion doesn't mean that it's necessarily your career. Because I've seen a lot more in my view, and I'm not a I'm not studied in this, I'm not a critic, but I see some people like, yeah, on TV or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, they're an okay actress. I've seen people at Towngate that are better actors, a local theater. And they're not making their living doing that, but you can tell that they love it and they're good at it. So be very aware to try not to get in the trap of measuring your success, in quotes, with someone else's standard. Because if you love acting, go for it. Absolutely do it. You might be an accountant who you mentor a child and that's what drives you. That's what your passion is. You're an accountant that pays the bills, but you have something else that gets you excited. 
And you can change and grow as you do this. I never had a passion for cats. I know. I hope that you're sitting down for that one. Met Tony, who had Joey, and I thought, oh, this relationship's going to end. And by a miracle, I'm still allergic to them. And I think my body's adapted somewhat. Fingers crossed when I moved to West Virginia that everything improves because I won't have all of the mold and mildew down here. Loving cats and opening up and listening to experienced animals allowed me to be open to plants and flowers. It allowed me to change and grow. So find something that is meaningful to you, that gets you excited. And again, don't focus. We get too tied up and I've got to make money in it. As long as you fulfill that, you will be happy. And that carries over into your career. It's like you've ever seen the video of the guy at the toll booth. He's dancing, moving around. That guy found a way that being a toll booth worker might not be his passion, but he brought his joy to his work. Take risk. Get out of your comfort zone. Leap into the unknown. Maybe you get the courage to self tell someone that you like them. I've done that before. Boy, it's scary. I have much more admiration for the people doing that. That's a scary thing. But you know what? It builds your courage. doesn't matter. You learn something about yourself and think, wow, if I can do that, maybe I can put my painting and show people what I've done on Facebook. Maybe I can do a website and do this in my spare time. When you go out of your comfort zone, that's like going out on that limb, but that's where you find the sweetest fruit. And that's where you can grow more. Part of me thinks that, I don't know if risk is the right word. I, as excited as I am to move to West Virginia, I have mixed feelings. You know, I grew up there, gone for over 30 years, and I'm now coming back. It's somewhat of a risk. Because, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. It was a risk to move out to Los Angeles without knowing one anyone. It was a risk to move and go to Maine not knowing one, anyone in the summers to get a job, especially because I was super shy back then. But I met Sybil. I met friends that I'm still friends with today. All those risks had reward. So again, it's, I'm not saying go out and bungee jump. Take a calculated risk and take those little baby steps and then you grow upon it. Take actions from today's podcast. Recognize where in your life you're growing. Contemplate times when you've gone outside of your comfort zone in the past. Understand how you benefited when you went outside your comfort zone. Acknowledge where you might be stuck right now. Embrace that you're a work in progress. Adjust your habits and actively work on changing. Do self-examination regularly. Rest and recharge. Play and have fun. Find your passion. Take risks. On our next episode, we're talking about taking off your mask. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out. Please rate, review, and share us.